Well, you have been working very hard in this course. Congratulations. And I've got some great news for you. Well, actually two pieces of great news. The first piece of great news is that this video is another very easy one. So go ahead and breathe a sigh of relief. You'll love how simple this concept is. And then the second piece of great news I have for you is that you have completed the first major domain in your journey of certified entry level Python programmer. So we'll have some fun in the next video to celebrate that fact. But for right now, as you know, we need to talk about the input function, and this is review for us, because everything I'm about to show you, we have actually seen before. So the first thing I want to remind you of is when it comes to your input function, as you can see, it is very simple. There's one thing really with the input function that you need to decide on, and that is, do you want to have a prompt for your user? enter something here. For example, that's right. Do you want to have a prompt for your user or not? I mean, that's really the one thing here as far as arguments go. Yeah, when we were looking at the syntax a moment ago, you saw that prompting is the only argument. So if we want a prompt, we would enter it. And notice you could use the same approach that you use when printing a string, we can use the single or double quotes around the text that would be our prompt. So enter something here, uh, we're gonna see that, and we can enter something, and there we go. It's just spit back out to us if all we are doing is the input command. Now, clearly what we are often doing is setting that input to a variable and I'll show you that in one moment, but I'm sure you're curious, what would happen if you didn't use a prompt? Well, it's just gonna sit there, yeah, waiting for your input. So that's a little strange. We can see where, you know, the prompt is a great thing, although it's possible, of course, that we might print the instructions, and if we print the instructions, there would be a new line, and then there would be the cursor after that line waiting for the input. So I can see us not having a prompt. Now, here's the big thing I want you to know about the input command. And as I said, we did cover this in a previous video, but this is the big thing for us to remember. And that is we are getting a string value. In fact, we just proved that to you, didn't we? Yeah, we entered 102 and we were given a string back. Here we entered 102 and given a string back. So by default, we are going to get a string out of the input command. Let's just see this even with a variable. So x equals input. So we're gonna ask for something and I'm gonna give a number. Let's give a float. And if I ask for the value of x, look at that it is going to be a string. So keep that in mind. You are getting a string when you do the input function. So what we can do, as we have seen in a previous lesson, is we could always say, all right, we need an integer so we can enclose the input in an integer function. So I can say input a whole number, and I want to thank one of our viewers for pointing out that you would need to be precise like that because we want an integer. Yeah, we want an integer here. And, you know, we know that because we're converting it into an integer. So it'd be smart to specify that we want an integer or a whole number. And so now, of course, oh, we have an error actually. And what I did wrong there was I did not give enough uh, exclamation, uh, parentheses, as you can see. So look at that. I have two open parens and I forgot my closing parens. So we need to stop the processing of this. And I can do that with, let's see. Okay, there we go. Just any character will uh, stop the processing of this. 
Okay, let's try it again. And this time, let's do it correct. So the integer function, and then an input, and then our instructions input a whole number, please. We should be polite. And then paren paren. There we go. And now we have this input a whole number, how about 157? And now if we print the value of x, notice it is an integer. It is not a string. Another way to kind of prove that would be uh, saying something like y equals x plus 10. 157 plus 10 is 167, and there's our proof that we are indeed working with an integer thanks to the integer function. So the input function, yeah, what a great way, simple way to get input from our end user, and please remember two things about it. You can use a prompt or not, and it's always going to be a string. If you need another number, you're going to need to typecast, as we learned about, and you're going to need to convert that string into the format that you require. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll be joining me in the next video for a celebration of the completion of our first domain.